What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is March 23rd, 2022. Please go ahead, do me a huge favor, smash the like button on this video, subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the price action in the indices. We're going to talk about some of my trades for today. And we're going to talk about all things markets. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. First of all, I just want to thank everyone for watching these videos. To everyone that has been commenting and showing support, that is awesome. Thank you so much. So let's go through our box scores for today. We have the S&P 500 finishing down 1.29%. We have the NASDAQ QQQ finishing down 1.44%. We have the IWM small caps finishing down 1.73%. Dow Jones down 1.36%. And the ARK Innovation ETF finished down one spot, 94%. The volatility across all of these indices increased. Pretty much everything aside from the ARK Innovation ETF closed on the ding dong lows of the day. You can see very low ranges here. And then the breadth was pretty horrible across the board with only 17% advancers in the IWM. If you've been watching my videos over the past couple days or if you are a member of the pristine capital trading community, you'll know that I was long for a little while there. Then as we started getting this beautiful bounce in the market, I started taking down my positions little by little because we're still in this weird environment where, oh my gosh, what's going to happen with the Fed? They're taking down the balance sheet. They're raising rates. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen with Russia? What's going to happen with inflation? And you know, we have a lot of weird things on the table. So for me, as the market continues to go to these loftier and loftier levels, and as we continue to get this beautiful month-end markup, I actually started reducing positions. And over the past couple days, I started adding short positions. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised to see this down market. Finviz heat map. Take a look at this. We had two big winners today. The two big winners were Apple and Tesla. I actually have a short position on in Tesla that at one point was literally like burning to the ground when this thing was up 4%. I added it yesterday into the bell and ended up not being so bad, only up 0.52%. We'll take a look at that chart in just a moment. But other than Apple and Tesla, pretty much everything was weak. Take a look at the semiconductors group. Just absolutely blood red. The software group, blood red. Financials, blood red. Aside from Berkshire, closed almost flat. But the energy names were pretty strong. So this is kind of like the worst cocktail you could get where energy is rallying and everything else is pulling back a little bit. Sectors. We have in our top slot, we have the KWeb China Internet ETF finished up 0.35%. At one point during the day, it was up multiple percentage points. But again, this rally, it's definitely getting a little bit more extended. When we flip over to the S&P 500, you'll be able to see that. Leaders for today, KWeb, we had, of course, the energy ETF, which we just talked about, and the gold miners. So it's not really very bullish if inflation hedges pretty much are going up, and that's about it. Some of the losers for today, we had the home builders down almost 4%, regional banks down 3.55%. And you can see we had healthcare down 1.8%, software down 2.47%. So yeah, after pretty much like a blistering six day rally, certainly not the end of the world to see a pullback for a single day. And then take a look at this style factors. We had the high beta style factor finishing down 2.05%, momentum down one spot 6.7%. And the big winner for today was high div low vol only down 0.2%. Let's take a look. Let's pull up some of these charts. Let's go over to the two big winners for today, which were Apple and Tesla. Let's pull these up. So we had Apple finishing up 0.82%. And oh my gosh, look at this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven green candles in a row. So it's pretty nuts because what I will say you know, I'm primarily a price and trend trader. What I will say is the price action has just been so wonky that this is actually a tougher environment for trend traders. I think this is more an environment where you want to be trading for mean reversion. So what I mean by that is like Apple, you could say, oh my gosh, it closed below the 200 day moving average. That's the worst technical sign ever. 
But then that followed, you know, that was followed up by a seven day rally. Same thing right here. Uh, you know, for various parts of the day today, I'm sure there were people having serious Apple FOMO. Sometimes if something is up like this many days in a row, you just have to be disciplined and really just look away from it and be like, if I miss it, I miss it. As you can see, we tried to move above this monthly point of control. We actually failed there. Some sellers stepped in, they auctioned it lower. Doesn't mean we can't get above it in the next few days, but just for this, you know, very steep ascent, you know, it looks like some seller stepped in and put the brakes on this asset, at least momentarily. Let's take a look here. We have Tesla. This one, again, I added a short position here yesterday and for part of the day. Did I feel a little bit stupid? Absolutely, because this was like the best performer in the S&P 500 for most of the day. We actually went up to this virgin point of control and you can see this was, this VPOC was established last month for February of about 1,040. And then again, some sellers stepped in, they auctioned this lower on the hourly chart. You can see this thing definitely got pretty extended well above this R1 pivot and well above this weekly value area high. So we'll see if that pullback continues. Tesla has definitely been a red hot stock. It's definitely not the end of the world. If you're bullish on Tesla, it's not the end of the world that it closed off the highs today because again this one's had like a seven day consecutive ascent ascent even if we were to just pull back to the five day ema that's a pullback down to about 947. all right let's take a look at kweb which was another big winner for today kweb this group definitely doing a lot better but when you look and you zoom out to the big picture is it really doing that great in the grand scheme not that much but this could be a nice trend reversal but again this one as well uh, some sellers stepped in and auctioned this lower. Let's take a look. Oh, let me actually look. I do this a lot. Like I'll look at the stuff that I'm, uh, you know, that's going against me. But this trade, this is my biggest options position that I currently have on the books. My TLT calls. And this one, very rarely does it happen where I just bottom tick an asset like this. But it worked out this way where I literally bought the bottom in these uh, 20 plus year treasuries. It's kind of interesting for most uh, equity traders. They're thinking like I got to trade stocks. This is actually me taking a bullish position on treasuries. I have the 130 strike May 20th calls. And I put those on yesterday. I pretty much like got it like very close to the bottom tick here. Got pretty lucky on that I must say. But yeah, when I put this trade on that options position was out of the money. And then very quickly today, this one went into the money. So pretty good stuff. And if we take a look at our 30 year treasuries, you know, we had a nice move higher today after being pretty oversold. All right, let's take a look. Our crude oil obviously went to the moon. And now because it's past six o'clock, we can actually see the opening of futures. Sometimes I do like to do this video a little bit later just so we can see what's going on in the futures. Sometimes I try to knock it out like literally right after the close. Take a look here. We have the S&P 500. Boom. Now, one thing I mentioned to our pristine capital community is today I'm going to be watching this level 4474 spot 25. That is the key level for me because that is the monthly point of control. And what we notice here is yesterday we closed above it. So I was like, hey, maybe we're going to get our move to 4563 spot 75. But today we rejected that level and we actually closed below it. Now, keep in mind, is this the end of the world? No, this was just a pullback to the five day EMA. But that definitely complicates things for market bulls because now suddenly you can start to make the case. Hey, was this just a bear market rally? Are we about to just roll over here and actually move to the bottom of value at 43.32. That is certainly still up in the air. My trend model is still at a plus three. And we actually just got a very bullish, again, squeeze metrics, dark index print of 50 spot four. So these dark pool buyers, they've just been absolutely relentless. But I do have some spy puts on. And so... You know, the way that I'm leaning currently is, you know, I have about 37% cash. I do have a spy short that I've been building. I have my Tesla short and I have my TLT calls. And then in terms of common stocks, I don't really have all that much on. I have a Bitcoin position. I have a position upstart as well. 
see i'm pretty light it's not really like oh my gosh like i'm short up to my eyeballs but i'm positioned net short and i'm holding a lot of cash so we will see what happens at the very least you know i wasn't really interested in getting bullish on everything like after this crazy run but if we get a nice consolidation here who knows we could get this markup all the way into quarter end i keep referencing this every day but it's very important there's this rebalancing flow that's occurring because remember once march 31st hits it's not only month end but it's quarter end and a lot of these pension funds hedge funds <clears throat> etc they are judged on quarterly performance so it does matter where we close for the quarter a lot of times there is this quarter end window dressing that it's called and basically it's like there's a lot of forces in the market that come together and basically like band together in order to push the market up into quarter end that way when clients get their uh quarterly statements whatever they're not like oh my gosh what happened here you know it sort of like puts everyone at ease so i'm cognizant of even if i might think that the market's a little bit overbought could it just continue to go and some of these rebalancing flows come in and just kind of push this thing up into month end it could certainly happen now these rebalancing flows every day that passes and every day that we get closer to the end of the month they become less and less of a concern because you might argue say like on the 16th oh man some of these funds they know that those rebalancing flows are coming in so they're gonna buy now get ahead of them and then if anything maybe they'll start scaling out at the end of the month as you get closer and closer to the end of the month there's less and less anticipation or looking forward to oh the buyers are gonna come so let me buy at a certain point it becomes all right let's look forward to when those buyers are not there so i certainly don't want to be caught holding the bag and that's why we're in this sort of strange position where i'm not carrying as many positions right now the s p 500 futures after just opening up are down a whopping 0.01 percent so basically nothing all right let's take a look here at our hourly chart real quick oh my gosh we're already at 12 minutes into this video this was another reason why i didn't want to get too crazy adding positions we have our weekly value very high down here at 4347 so i've noticed we tend to retest that weekly value very high quite often it doesn't have to retest it this week because we are pretty far away from it but i want to plan for that worst case scenario hey maybe we go all the way down here i don't want to be in a in a position where i get completely burned by that all right let's take a look boom we got our nasdaq up 0.07 percent in the after hours but this one also rejected at the monthly point of control and let's take a look as well at the russell 2000 this one actually rejected the monthly value where you high so you do want to look at these things like when an asset starts losing key technical levels or the indices do you definitely don't want to like discount that like that's definitely like all right you know keep that in your in the back of your mind and let's see our dogs of the dow jones they're down 0.04 percent down just a smidge in the after hours and they were down as well today they're starting to approach that monthly value area low so again it's not like this is like some beautiful market you know there we're still down year to date we had a beautiful bounce and now we have to see what happens the other thing take a look at this weekly chart wouldn't it just be like poetic justice if we retag this 20 week simple moving average but if this is a bear market rally wouldn't this be the perfect place for that rally to fail and for you know this to be the spot where the sellers step in you know we'll have to see what happens but that certainly fits with this being just a bear market rally so trying to keep as open of a mind as i can to all possibilities and that's why i'm carrying such a sizable cash balance all right let's take a look here in terms of trades for the day did i do anything no i didn't do any trading today and this is me like i'm just not messing around here like there's always that pressure especially for me since i run a trading community like i have to trade something every day oh my gosh i have to catch every single move that happens in the market and a lot of that behavior is driven by social media like when i was trading uh you know just like when i first got my start trading 
I never paid attention to social media whatsoever. The only reason I use it now is to really just help me in my career, that's about it. But using social media, it is completely toxic. It is the worst thing as a trader. You know, there's definitely some good people on there that share some good info, but once you find those people, then just like set notifications for them and like just turn everything else off because you really do like, you feel more pressured to like catch like every single move in the market. And I really think this year we're playing such a high stakes game. This isn't like just your, oh my gosh, the market's in an uptrend, everyone's up year to date, blah, blah, blah. This is like an environment where I've just said like, I don't even care. You know, I don't care if I'm missing little parts of little moves, whatever. What I'm most concerned with is when I am putting risk on, I'm putting it on in a trade that I really believe in. Not just like feeling an urge to trade every day, just to do it, just to try to generate some PL or whatever. So yeah, for today I had no trades. So I was pretty comfortable with how I was positioned. All right, let's take a quick look. We're gonna jump over to our Big Tech options order flow. Today's combined flows, oh my gosh. And look how much Tesla flow there was. This is like obscene. So these Tesla call buyers were binging on Tesla. 3.2 billion. Oh wait, this is so odd. It stopped at 1.20 p.m., what the heck? Let me, uh, let me refresh this. Gotta do it justice. I wanna see how much there actually was. Uh, options races, let's give this one more shot. And let's see. Dun, dun, dun. This thing's going a little bit slow, but that's okay. Do, 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 do. And it stops at 120 again. This thing stinks, I don't know. But anyway, I saw this earlier. It was at about 3.2 billion. Let's just disregard this. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if that number is accurate, but anyway. Let's take a look at our options matrix here. You can see these Tesla call buyers went absolutely crazy. They were just binging on some near-term calls. These are all for March 25th, so very short-term stuff, the 1,050 strike. I hope that doesn't work for them because I'm long the puts for Tesla. Let's see, SPY, we have a lot of put buying today. And what do we have? Oh yeah, GameStop, look at this. They were spamming the GameStop calls so let's end off with this. I don't know why I'm going to Finviz for this, but anyway. So GameStop is up another 14.5%. GameStop went from 80 bucks all the way up. Oh my gosh, went all the way up to 151. So the stock has nearly doubled over the course of maybe five trading days. What I have noticed in my experience within this meme economy, this meme market, is that typically when you start to see names like GameStop doubling in five days, that's where you're no longer like early to the rally. Doesn't mean the rally can't keep going, but it's not like, oh yeah, I'm getting such a great deal. Like these stocks, like, oh my gosh, the market's turning. Like that's a lot of times when things start to get a little bit more speculative, the call buyers start to come out buying like dailies and weeklies. You start to see everyone giving each other back slaps on Twitter. And a lot of times that's when I like to start scaling out of a few positions. With that being said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you guys all had an awesome trading session. I will see you all tomorrow. You guys are all awesome.